With the all-new Mercedes SL coming, let's take a look at the heritage, how the Mercedes SL became the icon it is today. Everything started with a 300 SL racing car here from 1952. It's the number two indeed, so the oldest SL that is still available and the second one that was built. This one had 170 horsepower, a three liter inline six cylinder. And from that race car then, the first Mercedes 300 SL was developed. And this is here a 300 SL Coupe, the Gullwing from 1957, here with 215 horsepower, also from that three liter inline six cylinder. Maximum speed up to 260 kilometers an hour, wow. And based on that, they developed the Roadster, this one here, the 300 SL Roadster from 1958. Basically same engine, but of course then no gullwing doors, but the open top. This one here built from 1954 up to 1963, around 3000 pieces, so really precious. Here this famous cooling opening for the drum brakes right there. This design element has been carried over the generations and it was also available with fabric seats. By the way, look at that here, the Roadster interior with this huge steering wheel. Of course, no power steering at all. And the round instruments right there. Also really characteristical here, the back mirror. And red was also a very famous interior color for that one. And design-wise, we can see here in the front, you can see how the headlamps form these domes. This was really remarkable as for the design. But the front grille, when you see nowadays Mercedes, this is really resembling. Then the W113, the so-called Pagoda, because when the hardtop is mounted, it looks like an upright Pagoda. So this was then the nickname for this model from 1963 up till 1971. This is also a very thought after model. Around 50,000 pieces were built. The grille has a little bit grown in width there, but the front lamps, they are actually quite similar. If you compare it to the predecessor, really interesting golden color. And my favorite design element is here that you have the same wheel colors here. This, you know, these alloy caps then, same here as for the paint. So these pieces here, when they are properly restored, also extremely expensive, not as expensive as the 300 SL, but these two, the oldest one, definitely the most expensive ones. The one you see here is from 1968 and has a 2.8 liter inline six cylinder, 170 horsepower. You see the 280 SL automatic gearbox and of course has been very famous in California. Look at that, the interior. It's actually really resembling still from the original 300 SL, but definitely a lot of upgrades. Also chassis safety wise, it was a big step forward. So when you had a crash, you weren't like, yeah, <laughs> literally crushed. So more chassis rigidity and safety definitely for the passengers. Of course, no airbag yet at that stage. And you can see the automatic gearbox. And then the very famous R107. This one has been so popular worldwide. The first SL that was built, first of all, for a very long time between 1971 and 1989. And it was also sold in so many more pieces. And that's why it can be bought relatively affordable if you compare it to the Pagoda model, for example. Still this typical wide front grille that we saw in the past and also see again nowadays. But here then it moved more to these horizontal tail lamps, which then at this point on really defined Mercedes design. Engines from 2.8 up to 5.6 liter. And this one here is a R107 500 SL from 1982 with a five liter V8 engine, 240 horsepower. And the interior, this is the one, you know, I found most beautiful actually. Maybe it's just my generation when I grew up, also with the W123. So it has some modern design elements, you know, like here, like the automatic gearbox, but still analog gauges and so on. And the steering wheel, 
is also better as for safety it's actually softer so when you crash into it it was actually better and this one was also from this model here on from 82 available with an airbag interesting stylish blue interior here with a lot of fabric for example the leather red seats were also available and also these models were for years best sellers in california so to speak and this very typical you know more more down to earth design more box style and also take a look here at the ripped tail limbs. they were also used for different models also for the very first baby bands the c-class and also for the very first s-class and so on they also defined the mercedes design here in the 80s and because mercedes was so busy developing the baby bands this generation here was built for 18 years so the next generation was delayed this one here the longest sl generation ever built and here we have a red r107 so a very famous color for that one also and the combination of red on the outside and beige on the interior this is of course a very beautiful one what do you think about this one here by the way with the manual gearbox that was also available oh this beige cloth is really cool right and then there's the R129 or 129 built from 1989 up till 2001. This is, you know, now a already more or less modern vehicle in this very box design. I mean, really strong on the road. The front grille has been changed significantly. It has, I would say, less elegance but more presence on the road, more sportiness, and that was also under the hood. 2.8 up till. 7.3 liter that was then a 12 cylinder engine with 525 horsepower the very one we see here is a mercedes sl 600 from 1995 a 6 liter v12 with almost 400 horsepower and top speed was 250 kilometers an hour the ripped tail arms here stayed the same the interior now looks completely different more like a modern car and this one here also introduced the airbag then from stand equipment in the previous generation was still an option also here integrated seat belt holders and there was also then this automatic overroll bar that pops out and it also came with a hardtop you can put in right there in a very easy way and the roof is also fully automatic the r129 also had the very first adaptive suspension at mercedes Next generation, the R230. This one was built from 2001 up till 2011. And it has also adaptive suspension as standard. Also offers air suspension. Engines, six, eight, and 12 cylinders up to 670 horsepower. And you can see here in the side profile, a little bit more round shapes, definitely. This one is here, a V8 compressor. Oh, and let me look at these wheels here. Also beautiful work with the screws. And the one you see here is an SL55 AMG from 2005. 5.4 liter V8, 517 horsepower. The interior with more luxury features and more plush and definitely more round again. So this is very interesting. So both exterior and interior, when we take a look here at the line of vehicles, it began round and central. Then everything got more boxy and angular. And here, once again, a little bit rounder. Very interesting how the design evolved both in exterior and interior. Then, of course, there's the current model, the R231 or 231 from 2012 up to 2020. We also had it here and it had it you know, in the south of France, for example, with a beautiful road trip. You can also tune into this review, so I really recommend you to do that. And this, of course, has all the modern amenities and also infotainment system wise. This is where this was more crucial. And the driving agility was, of course, way better than the outgoing models. All right, let's start with the driving part. And here, the original 300 SL with the inline six cylinder, three liter inline six cylinder. And I mean, yeah, I've always been dreaming about driving this vehicle. It's so manual, so raw, actually. No seat belts, no, you know, no re uh, head restraints whatsoever. Of course, yeah, that's not the safest thing to do at all. But of course, it gives you definitely a sense of freedom 
huge steering wheel, of course no power steering, everything is manual work, you really have to work the steering wheel for that and a lot of air inside here, manual gearbox, 4 speed manual gearbox, it's just something really really special. Suspension wise of course you feel all the bumps and so on, you feel that this is derived from a race car actually. Of course, not compared to nowadays race cars at all, but at that time this was a super fast car. And funny thing is, here on the, on the left side there's this lever next to the steering wheel and when you push it down it's a light horn and when you push it even further down it's light horn plus the real horn and the horn is like this. <laughs> and it just sounds so funny. And at that time, also in Germany, it was allowed to use light horn and the real horn at the same time, really to say like, make way, I'm coming. In front of us, by the way, the Pagoda is driving at the moment and, I mean, it's not this kind of vehicle you would drive on an everyday basis. It's just, let's say, too complicated for that and too precious, I would say. The clutch and the brake really require a lot of manual work and I wouldn't say, I mean, it's relaxing to drive because you would never drive really fast in this vehicle here, although it is actually capable of doing so. But again, if you search for an everyday driver, this is not something. And of course, in the, the, you know, when it's you know, in a good shape, just a couple of pieces are available anyway. And yeah, easily a million, million and a half plus for a piece like I'm driving here right now. And now the Pagoda from 1968, also a six-cylinder engine and you sit way higher than in the 300 SL. This is really remarkable and you immediately feel everything is a little bit, you know, plusher, more comfortable. The steering also doesn't require so much work, so this is way easier. It's also way calmer on the inside. I have seat belts and also head restraints. They're not too high though, but definitely safety-wise, this was a huge upgrade and this model is also really sought after because it has also such a classic look and also just a couple of thousand pieces exist at all. And also here we are on a very beautiful countryside road here in the south part of Germany and once again the focus is still comfort. At that point of course it was a racy car in comparison to other cars but for us nowadays you sit inside and think oh yeah this is really suitable for cruising and so on but definitely easier to drive than the original 300 SL. And in this case also I have an automatic gearbox which makes driving of course even easier and you can just enjoy and cruise along right here. And the suspension is actually quite soft so um, the car is you know, you know leaning towards the corner I'm driving here and the engine is really nice so it has this rather sonorous sound. It has never been about you know like being like screaming out or, or something like that. The SL has always been about a lot of elegance and classiness and so on. This has remained up, you know, until today. And it's so funny, we are driving all the vintage cars here together in a, um, you know, in, in a train, so to speak. And especially when I was in the 300 SL, the reaction of the people and also when seeing this vehicle here, the older it gets, everyone was giving thumbs up. Uh, everyone was putting windows down and saying like, oh my, wow, this is amazing and so on. People were, were giving way, even though they had right of way and they just want to see these cars on the road and enjoy it. And this is also something a lot of car enthusiasts share, you know, when they see these vehicles on the road, you know, just happy also for the people that are, that are driving and also sharing the enthusiasm. And this one, of course, here I'm driving out, not as expensive as the 300 SL in front of us. But also, when you think about, you know, when you have a normal salary, even this one here is, you know, hardly, uh, hardly affordable at all. Really classy interior, you also um, realize it while driving. And seating-wise from the Comfort, by the way, I found the 300 SL a little bit better. So the seat's not ideal for me. But definitely I feel safer because of the new safety mechanism that were introduced at that stage. So when you are in the 3SL without a seatbelt, without anything, you tend to drive slower actually. And there's a funny story um, from German figures, you know, uh, automotive or car figures. So with the introduction of the seatbelt 
in the following years there were more deaths on German roads. And then people said like, oh, you know, these evil seatbelts, you know, but there was correlation, yes, uh, but not the proper, you know, causal correlation. So the thing was that when seatbelts were introduced, people were feeling safer and driving faster and therefore there were more deaths on the road. Of course, seatbelts are crucial for anything relating safety and so on. So really would go for this generation in comparison to the 300SL just to have the seatbelts. This is of course a very crucial change and we soon of course get to more safety features. I'm looking so much forward how the R107 compares to this one here. But I mean, once again, what a joy right here. Just enjoying, you know, the roads, the surroundings and also the reaction of the people, of course. When you drive these ones here and especially them with open top, you just get more in connection to people and this is also something you know, we can really appreciate, especially in Corona times where everyone is drifting apart. Just, you know, nice friendly gestures and getting together by car enthusiasm, enthusiasm like, you know, in a vehicle like this. Now the R107, this very model here from 82, 1982, and here driving a five liter V8 an SL500 and let's see yeah that one has some serious power you feel that in front of us the, the successor model the R129 and once again here you feel more calmness definitely in the interior and steering once again even easier to control and of course a more modern interior for that time and the steering wheel is plusher as well also has you know this middle area where it can also give way a little bit in case of a crash no airbag yet but from 82 for some of this model year on the airbag was an option act actually so that's of course a big safety thing but just on the driver's side the seats are actually quite identical so not much difference in seating comfort I would say maybe this one a little bit more seating comfort once again better um, safety measures airbag of course the biggest thing but only for later models and this generation here was built for such a long time and because it was just yeah even already at that time a real classic a lot of cruising fun here indeed and this one is already in a in the direction if you compare it also to the Pagoda, this one is can be a car you buy as a vintage vehicle and you say, I can use it for driving every day, you know? So this is already, then, I would say, the first time in with the generations possible there, again, for a modern taste, because it's not a complicated vehicle at all, especially when we have an automatic gearbox here. We will drive, of course. Yeah, listen to the sound. Of course, not, once again, not so much screening out. This was then rather than for later AMG models to come then. And this is really a perfect thing for California, highway number one and so on. You still have this elegant styling on the exterior, but already have a more or less modern interior with modern amenities and where you can get along quite easily. You know, of course, also the manual AC control and so on. And these air vents where, where the styling has also been carried over through the next generation. The instruments are also better to read while driving, by the way. So that's a good thing. And you just have more power on the hood and you feel that the engine is just more spontaneous in the approach, definitely. So, especially also when cornering, it's just easier. This is a car where you think, oh, I do a little bit of slalom with it. And where the other ones you rather concentrate on driving, here, of course, the car still shakes up quite notably, so the suspension is still set on a very, very soft note. A lot of air, you can also see it, you know, yeah, my hairs are curly all over the place at the end of this comparison review, this uh, heritage comparison review, but that's, I mean, it's so much fun, I can tell you. And I really have to say that styling-wise, exterior and interior, I feel most at home in this vehicle here somehow. Um, the other ones are in a way more complicated, so to speak, for modern taste. This one here fulfills already 
modern needs for drivability, but still offers the vintage styling. This, you know, this sweet spot, this is what I appreciate most about this R107 generation. So you can also relax while driving. This is the great, greatest thing and just enjoy having this vehicle. And I mean, when you get one of the latter versions also with the airbag, then you also have additional safety measures as well. So I think this is to me also a very important thing because yeah, you drive slower with the vintage vehicles, yes, but at the same time, when they're safer, it's of course a good thing to have. And now the R129 or 129, this specific model here from 1995, six liter V12 with 400 horsepower. And I mean, the model in front of us here now, the, <coughs> the R, I know this one here, and navigation, the, um, the R107, the one in front of us, to this one here, I mean, what a huge step, a huge step. So from the 300SL to the Pagoda, to the 107, you always, always felt a small step rather than evolution, you know? The one in front of us then being built for 18 years, this year was delayed due to the development capa um, you know, uh, capacities for the baby bands. So this is definitely also the biggest step. And I mean, it's an absolute revolution. This is, it's a completely different car. The three before, you could really follow the evolution while driving. This one here now is absolutely like, you know, more or less any other modern car. It feels so much more comfortable actually. And the steering is very modern. You have airbag as standard in here, not the very first models, but then it became standard very soon. Then also the passenger side airbag became standard and it's way more silent here. You are more protected against the wind, for example, especially when you put up the windows and even more so than when you put up the wind deflector. Really everything to enjoy here as well. So yeah, it's, this has nothing to do with the others before. Of course, the SL spirit was more or less kept and you can also see, you know, exterior continuity, especially with this then, angular design between predecessor and this one. But the interior, of course, absolutely different. It is actually simple and stylish in the upper area and so on. The lower area then, there, um, you know, everything started with that you have so many different uh, buttons to press and so on and, you know, more uh, electronics and so on and so on can also easily um, you know, control the seating here while driving even, that is easily possible. And also the steering can be adjusted also electronically here even while driving. So definitely more amenities and this car is absolutely easy to drive. So no compromises as for that. And it's also once again, definitely cheaper than the 107. And this could be also one of the future tips because this one most probably will be the SL that will raise in the value the next. So yeah, that might be actually a, a very good bargain and it's super relaxing to drive. At the same time, this one of course was a very powerful model, but you can also easily go for example for a six cylinder. And acceleration from here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this 12 cylinder power and also here the uh, stability control was screaming out already, oh, Thomas, what are you doing there? And you are gone. So power wise, of course, this is a big step forward and also from the you know, whole noise levels and so on and so on. Definitely the most comfortable SL so far. So the seating pro progress, the seating upgrade, of course, huge. And this is then also a car where you have just the modern safety features you can feel as safe as in a very modern car with this one here. This is actually the, yeah, probably the biggest advantage. And when you think about it, that this is actually at this moment here when we're filming the video in 2021. So maybe you're watching here at the later stage. So at this stage here, when we were doing the video, the SL I'm driving here right now is the cheapest SL that is available. I think that's a very, very interesting aspect because it also counts as a very reliable one, especially if you, for example, go with the normal suspension, 
where you don't have to have any expensive repairs or something. And then, as I said, go for a six cylinder, which is also lower in the price. Yeah, I mean, then you can't make so much wrong right there. Of course, it's best always to have an expert or maybe to go via the um, respective clubs for these model years to give, you know, have some tips like what to look out for or buy the car from an expert or together with an expert. That's, of course, always a good thing to do when, when buying the vintage cars here. And yeah, this is really, uh, really enjoyable. So I have to say, the older models had more like this let's say unique sensation because this is here just giving you okay it's already a modern car you know so the vintage sensation better definitely with the other models but you know on the factual side this one here it just drives so much better and the biggest thing it's so much more comfortable and it's so much safer and these two things definitely speak for this one and you still have you know this rather rectangular classy design on the exterior which from this point on more again went into this roundish design scheme and now the 230 next generation <laughs> SSL 55 of course this is not like directly comparable because this one here is the AMG version even more power, 5.4 liter V8 with over 500 horsepower. Wow, of course, massive, but that's not about it. It's today more about the generation from generation and so on. This one here, way crisper than in the drivetrain, not only because it's the AMG, but also just because this generation has, you know, moved further in driving agility. So this then now feels more or less the same like the very current SL at the moment. This is of course then another evolutionary upgrade. But the thing is here, when you look at the interior also while driving and some of the controls and so on, you feel that it has lost a little bit of class, you know? So this more or less looks then, you know, I had this volume knob here, for example, in the, I owned a Smart 4.4 when it was based on the Mitsubishi Colt platform once as a small vehicle, like an everyday driving and so on. I had the same volume knob, for example. So, and, um, I mean, it's also an absolute fantastic car, but today is comparing generations and it drives even better. It's even sportier, especially the steering is more precise. That's cool. Of course, in here, more powerful in the AMG version. But so, you know, more safety and so on, even more infotainment. It has uh, also a GPS and so on, but meanwhile, it's outdated. But I have some of the feeling that some of the parts lost a little bit of classiness. You, you, do you know what I mean? So when you look, I mean, you, you see it here also now on camera and you saw it also in the, um, you know, in the interior perspective. So the R129, which is in front of now, in front of us now, it more had this typically more like I'm Mercedes style, you know? And this is more a little bit bland. It could also be some other brand. So that's my, my feeling. So really powerful, so much fun. As for the driving fun, this generation is even better, no matter if it's an AMG or not. So this also you see through the generation, every generation has been made more agile. The R129 or 129, was definitely also a little bit shakier from the suspension. This one here also as a new, as a non-AMG version, is just more precise as for the suspension as well. Without losing comfort, it's still a very, very comfortable vehicle. Yeah, but somehow more, let's say, interchangeable. So this is also something, but probably also with all manufacturers, when they started with their very, very first generations, they were, you know what I mean, every model was so much apart and so different. And the more they moved up in the generations, the more equal in the way they became, you know? That's a general trend. It also has to do, of course, with safety regulations, emissions, then also crash safety as for pedestrians in a way that restrict design a little bit. But of course, also a little bit of about the whole philosophy and so on. So. 
Yeah, this is so interesting for me to do that here today. Of course, there's still the next generation here of this one to come. We will take, because we don't have the car here today, we will take that one then from an existing review of us to take just a short look inside there. But I can already tell you the so far current generation even better in the driving dynamics and also in the comfort. So the current generation SL that was built from 2012 to 2020, that is definitely the comfort king. The seats are actually also the best. Um, and of course, big differences. This generation here, and also then the, you know, so here 230 and 231, both with hard top. So on the one hand, they were all hard top lovers, really, really appreciate that. On the other hand, of course, when you have it with the open top here, then there's hardly any space in the boot left. So when the all new generation SL will come, then you will have a soft top once again and you'll have even more space in the trunk. As this car is also about cruising, about the superb suspension, the small engine is really enough in the 4 SL400 or SL450 as we call it in the US. Now we have another acceleration for you. I go to the Sport Plus mode again to have some more sound for you. And we can do some 70 to 100. And you see that, well, we'll be very quick. Nope, that's already it. So you see, I mean, it's 4.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And that's 0.9 seconds is the difference to the highest AMG spec version. And you have to pay 100,000 euros plus for that. And that's not really worth it. So on to concentrate on the uh, wind noise and stuff, I go back to the comfort mode again to make it a little bit more silent. And when we're going 100 kilometers an hour, or 60, 62 miles an hour, it's still perfectly fine to ride with the open top. You can still have a lot of fun, although the car is so much laid out on comfort. Um, and I think it's very important to me, I would rather go for the Mercedes SL than for Mercedes AMG GT or GTC as we've recently um, ridden. Because here, you know, in the fast corners, you can have a lot of fun. It's great agility, but it's not that stiff, not that sporty as the GTC. But it really is better, especially for your lower back. So um, those seats here are way better than the ones we had in the AMG GT, way more comfortable on the long-term run. And that will be more important to me. And again, I can stress the V6 is the right combination for this car. I've driven this car with the V8 too, with the SL500 or 550 in US. There's also a good combination basically, but this one is really sufficient. So driving wise, my favorite is definitely the 231, the most current generation, most comfort and most fun in driving. But styling wise, exterior and interior, the R107, this one here, but the overall best price performance, I think here with the 129, actually lowest price, but still classy styling on the exterior and already good comfort and safety. Also tune into more Mercedes SL content right here. You see the videos and also more links in the video description. Which one would you actually go for? Tell us in the comments, which Mercedes SL generations would you actually like to own?